I wanted to clear up two things before I get started here, okay? Uh, first of all, some of you came and didn't see my car and were wondering where I was. <laughs> I, I was here early, but then I remembered that I had left my robes at home. I had to run back real quick. <laughs> I, uh, I, asked my, I, asked, uh, I prayed to the Lord, Lord, help me not to forget anything or anybody <laughs> uh, this morning. And uh, he helped, but he, he, he sort of uh, said, okay, I'll give you just enough time to go back and get it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the second thing is that, um, you know, some of you have been asking me, what do you call me now that I'm the pastor? <laughs> if you call me Rick, that's fine, okay? Uh, but if you would like, Pastor Rick is also fine. That's... Hey, you. Yeah, sorry? Hey, you. <laughs> and I may think that you're talking to someone else. Uh, <laughs> so let's get started. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us and bringing us here again today to study your word. And we ask again that you would be with us, that you would send us your Holy Spirit, help us to understand and to put into practice what you have for us today. We know that you have good things for us, especially since we're going to be thinking about what you have given us in communion. And we ask that you would open our minds and hearts to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today. Well, I forgot to print more off. It, it, it's the it's same, same paper. Class, yeah. It's the same paper number two that you had. Uh, I, I guess the only thing you can do if you didn't bring your paper is just to kind of take some notes on a piece of paper. I'm sorry. That's another thing I forgot. I, 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 I can go make some copies. Great, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Well, while she's doing that, I'm just going to go and review a little bit here. Uh, and I told you last week that when we're in communion, we're kind of in a time machine. Okay, we've got connections to the past, connections to our present, and connections to our future in Jesus. Now, just as a review, uh, you remember that we we talked about how the Lord's Supper uh, is the New Testament, the New Covenant version of the Passover and the sacrifices in the Old Testament. And we studied uh, uh, the Passover and how everything is reflected in, the, in our communion. Uh, and again, it, just as a review, you can see some of the main passages about the New Testament, the Lord's Supper, here, uh, especially where Jesus was instituting the Lord's Supper at 1 Corinthians, where it talks about some of the implications of the Lord's Supper, and, uh, and maybe possibly John. There's a lot of other references in the scriptures, but it's just like a one-liner, and, and these are the main passages. Now, again, just to review, we talked about how Jesus celebrated then the Passover with his disciples. That was when he instituted the Lord's Supper. And during the meal, Jesus inaugurated the new covenant. This is something that is an extension of the old, but it's also changed. Everything is new. Everything is bigger because Jesus came. Uh, he gave thanks then. He broke bread. He distributed to the disciples saying, this is my body broken for you, given for you. And again, yeah, when it, when probably, we talked about that, probably it was the third cup in the, in the celebration, the cup of redemption, where he took the cup of wine and gave it to his disciples and said, this is the blood, this is my blood of the new covenant. Uh, and do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And then Jesus commanded his disciples to celebrate this act again and again in his memory, as often as you drink it, right? As often as you do this, uh, in remembrance of him. Uh, any uh, questions or comments so far about the review? Anything that, yeah? Uh, explain to me, you mentioned the third cup. Yeah, remember we talked about how the Passover, at, in the Passover meal, the typical thing, the, the custom was to have four cups of wine during the course of the meal. And not 
not all at once, okay? <laughs> not, not just in, 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 in an hour, but you know, they, they had the whole evening that they were doing this, and they would have four cups of wine. The first cup, the cup of thanksgiving, the second, the cup of uh, praise, the third, the cup of redemption, and the fourth, the cup of hope. And, and the most likely thing, since the Bible says, then after supper, he took the cup. You know, they would have the supper between the second cup and the third cup. So the most likely thing is that he was taking the third cup, the cup of redemption. And, and that was pretty appropriate. And he would be taking the cup of redemption and saying, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the remission of sins, the redemption, right? Would you say those four again, the thanks? Sorry? Uh, say those again for the four. Right, thanks. the cup of thanksgiving, okay. the cup of praise, the cup of redemption, and the cup of hope. Okay, uh, again, last week, very quickly, we, t we said, what is the Lord's Supper? We said, yeah, you know, when we go out to eat, uh, or we go at home to eat, it's just a supper. That's not the Lord's Supper. But what the Lord's Supper is, is when we're taking the bread and the wine, and we're combining it with the Word of God, and He is present there in a very special way with His body and blood. Uh, so this is something different. It's not just eating and drinking, it's the Lord's Supper, not just any supper. That was what we were going to then. And that's where we left it at last week. So today we're going to start with the time machine. Uh, yeah, first of all, the Lord's Supper, the communion points to the past. When you go up to the altar, you're going back in time. Okay, and let's just read one more time. 1 Corinthians 11. If you would look in your Bibles, please. 1 Corinthians 11. See a little bit of that. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Okay, so according to 1 Corinthians, what are we remembering in the Lord's Supper? That he was betrayed. Sorry? That he was betrayed. <laughs> he was and betrayed, to, okay. And to pray and give thanks. Okay, we're, we're remembering the act of the Lord's <laughs> Supper, that's true. Uh, but especially we're supposed to be remembering yeah, more body. than just the act of the Lord's Supper, what the Lord's Supper was pointing to, right? What's His that? Body and blood. Right, body. That, he, yeah, that he was dying for us on the cross. You proclaim uh, the Lord's death until he comes. Correct. The Lord's death on the cross for us, right? Yeah, and this is my body gets given for you. This is my blood shed for you. Uh, you have yeah. So when you go up to communion, what are you thinking about? You don't have to answer that if you don't want to. If you want to, you can. <laughs> but just think about it. But what are you thinking about when you go up to the Lord's Supper? Are you remembering, okay, Jesus died for me? Or I I don't know about you, but there's always a temptation for me to be thinking about other things. And even as a pastor, I'm thinking, okay, what's the hymn after this? <laughs> no, wait a minute. That's not what we're there for. Uh, you know, it, 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 I think the devil does everything he can to try to distract us at that moment to not think about what Jesus says he wants us to remember. Has it happened to you? Well, and that we're receiving that along with along with 
those who have gone before us. I mean, it, it tells us that we are having communion with the saints, and mm -hmm. that's, uh, I think about that yeah. too, but that I'm receiving God's forgiveness and He's filling my body with, with all the grace. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, that's a very important point. That was what I was going to say next. You know, we're, we're not just remembering like, okay, I get out my old uh, it, 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 book of pictures and I remember when this and I remember when that. Nostalgia. It's not just remembering that Jesus died because he's saying, I died for you. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. Uh, the Lord's Supper is reminding us that Jesus died for our sins. By faith in him, we are forgiven. So he's reminding us of Christ's sacrifice, but it's not just a history lesson, okay? It's supposed to be, like you said, to uh, encourage us to have more faith in Jesus, to re remember again, he died for me. I'm free, I'm forgiven. I, I have a new life because of Jesus. Wow. Uh, I, I know many times we go up to the Lord's Supper very solemnly. And it, on the one hand, it's appropriate that we go with respect. It, it's something serious. It's not something frivolous. But at the same time, I can't help but think, if I'm really thinking about what Jesus is doing for me, wouldn't I have a smile on my face? There's some joy. Some, what? There's, there should be some joy. Some joy, yeah. Come think, back wow. with a smile on your face. Yeah. <laughs> he, yes, he died. Yes, it's serious. Yes. But he died for me. Wow. I think it, it, that sometimes we get so used to doing it, it's just automatic, you know, and, and we don't we don't remember the way he's asking us to remember. If you look at First uh, Peter two, can we read this together? It's up on the board or on the screen. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Well, what does that mean to you? When you read that, what does that say to you? That he's removed our sin from us. We are we are pure and and it's just been lifted from us. He, he sin, took it away. Yeah. It's gone. It yeah. He's like when they take out the trash. With the, he's looking at us through Jesus. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I would agree. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Christ has been given. Yeah. Do you doubt that God really loves you? Do you doubt that He uh, has saved you, that you're going to heaven? A lot of people tell me that they have doubts. Maybe some of you have had doubts or have doubts. Uh, you know, so a lot of people come to me and say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm gonna go to heaven or not. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When God opens up the judgment books, am I going to be in the good part or not? And you know what? The, this is the reassurance, like you're saying, Elliot. Yes, it's true. Here it is. Believe it. I said it. <laughs> I'm going to follow through. It's not because we've been so good. It's because Jesus died on the cross for us. On the tree, like it says here. Yeah. I like uh, to see myself as you when you're go going to the communion rail, you know, that we kneel and we put our hands like that. I always think myself as a beggar, you know, when you're begging for mercy, begging for, you know, we don't have anything, you uh -huh. know, what can we offer, but then he gives us. So I think that's a picture, you know, so you don't become proud, like, oh, I deserve to be here or... Oh, because I'm a member, or because I do this, or I do that. You know, it's just you know, always remembering, reminding myself, you know, you don't deserve this. Yeah. You're coming That's... here because the Lord is having you here, not because anything of you. Like, yeah. Did did you did you all hear what exactly. she was saying? Could could you hear me over there? Yeah. Uh, I think that's something really neat. I mean. There's many different ways in which we can distribute communion in church. Uh, we can go up and kneel, we can uh, have, make a line, we can pass it all out to everybody. There's a lot of different ways to do it. There's no 
there's no way that is sinful or not sinful. Uh, but that's one beautiful thing I think about in our normal way of doing communion is that we go up and we kneel in, in front of the Lord. You know, that's that reminding us. I don't deserve it, but Jesus loves me and he forgives me. Wow. Well, let's go on. And not only are we um, not only are we uh, uh, going and just remembering, in a certain sense, we are reenacting the Lord's Supper when Jesus instituted it. Uh, we're communicating the gospel in the Lord's Supper. You know, very often we say, okay, the Bible is the Word of God. In what sense? Well, it's the Word of God written down. Uh, a lot of messages that God communicated to prophets and apostles, and they wrote them down for us. Here's the Word of God. But the Bible also talks about Jesus being the living Word of God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the Word made flesh. But the Lord's Supper then, the Lord's Supper and baptism also, we can talk about that later. Uh, those are, are tangible ways of communicating the Word of God. We don't just have the words, we have action, eating and drinking. We have something physical, you know, and we have the action in baptism of pouring water over somebody, uh, something you can touch. Uh, so the Lord's Supper is communicating the gospel. It, 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 it is doing it by reenacting, once again, what Jesus did right before he went to the cross. So not only are we re remembering, we are also, in a sense, reenacting. Now, we have to be a, a little bit careful when we say that, because there are some Christians that believe that we are actually sacrificing Jesus again when we have the Lord's Supper. And that's not what we're talking about here. You know, the book of Hebrews says that Jesus was sacrificed once for all. He didn't have to be sacrificed again. But we are reenacting the Lord's Supper in a way that is supposed to be communicating God's love and forgiveness to us as we go to the Lord's Supper. So we can say, first of all, that uh, we are reenacting in the sense that the words of Jesus we hear again. And those are proclaiming the gospel. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. So that's what is happening in the Lord's Supper. We're hearing those words, and the Holy Spirit is wanting to use those words to help us to have more faith in Jesus. Uh, if you would look at Hebrews 4.12, please. Hebrews 4.12, toward the end of the Bible. So, Al, uh, how would you summarize that? What does that mean for you? We have to look inward when we're up there and think about a few different questions for ourselves. Are we repentant of our sins? Do we even acknowledge that we have any in the first place? Um, are we in concordance with the people that are around us? Do we believe that it is the body and blood of Christ? And most of all, do we believe that we are forgiven because of that? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, are we believing the word that is spoken here? Yeah, yeah go ahead. No. Well, yeah. What uh, Jacob uh, said, discerning, this Bible says, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Uh -huh. Which is a little different for each of Yeah. I think that point is a little harder than just 
Yeah, uh, I, I believe, I don't remember right now, but I believe that the, the Greek word can mean, uh, you know, either one of those. Uh, but yeah, okay, it's, the Lord's word is inspecting us. Yeah. That's why we don't have clothes or gloves. Uh -huh. Yeah, the, the, uh, uh, this part about the word, you, you can see that the word has power. And the word has power to convict us of our sins, but it also has power to, uh, to help generate faith in us, to bless us. And that's the, that's the thing. When we go to the Lord's Supper, as Jacob was saying, okay, we're saying, well, Lord, forgive me. Am I coming repentant? Do I hear the word of God, which is telling me I haven't lived up to what God wants? But then again, the second part is the gospel part. Do I believe what Jesus says here? That he forgives me. Is that what's going on? So the word of God has power. And that's why we repeat the words of Jesus when we have the Lord's Supper. Now, if, if somebody forgets to say the words of Jesus for some reason, we're still reenacting his Lord's Supper. It doesn't mean that magically things have stopped. You know, that's the thing. Um, some people look at God's word as sort of like a magic spell. You know, we say the right words, and magically something happens. Um, th th this is the case with some churches and their, their, their doctrine. They, they figure that if a duly ordained priest says the words, then automatically you have the Lord's Supper. If he's not been ordained, or if he doesn't say the words right, you didn't have the Lord's Supper, okay? That's not the kind of power that we're talking about here. It's not abracadabra. This is my body. Oof, it is. Okay, no, we're not talking that kind of power. What we're talking about is that the Holy Spirit is always looking to use the Word of God to uh, create and sustain and strengthen our faith in Jesus. It's like a tool that the Holy Spirit is using to knock on our doors. And to, uh, if we go to the Lord's Supper and we're not uh, in faith, like you said, TJ, you know, if we're not trusting in him at that point, if we're not knowing what we're doing, then we're, we're not really getting the benefit from the Lord's Supper because we're, we're, we're in a sense, we're kind of resisting the Holy Spirit, right? We're, we're not letting him do his work. Uh, but it, it, when we go trusting in the words of Jesus, then the Holy Spirit is, is, is powerful. It's something that's working in us. Um, again, and we talk about the words of Jesus in the Lord's Supper being a reenactment. Also, just the act of participating in the Lord's Supper is a tangible sign of God's love and forgiveness. We're reenacting what Jesus did. And so we're connecting with him. Okay? Again, let's take a look at John 20, 30 and 31, please. signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Okay. What, what do you see there? What, do you, what does that mean to you? That he had, you know, performed many other miracles, but only, you know, what we see written here in this book, those are the truths. So okay. we need to look at the Bible. Okay. He, he, he wrote down some signs. Yes. Some, and when he talked about signs, he was talking about miracles that Jesus did. But they weren't just miracles. They were miracles that were pointing to him as the Savior. 
So we can see a lot of signs in, in the Bible. Uh, uh, when, two Sundays ago, uh, we were thinking about the rainbow, the, the, the reading of the rainbow. The rainbow was a sign of God's promise that he was not going to destroy the whole world again through a flood. Uh, and, and we can see that Jesus did many signs there. Well, in a sense, the, the Lord's Supper also is a sign. Jesus didn't just give us words. He also said, okay, eat and drink. Because Jesus could have just said, hey, just remember that I forgive you. Okay, that would be good. Okay, it's, go, it's okay. It's good to hear the word of, of Jesus. But uh, if he didn't just give us the words. He said, eat and drink. You know, as often as you eat this, as often as you drink this, in remembrance of me. You know, we're, so when we are doing that, it's, it's a sign of his forgiveness. It's an act where we're remembering his forgiveness. Uh, so it's a repeatable sign. It's so that we can trust in him and have eternal life. Now we have to be careful again, okay? Because some people look at this as a, a, a magic thing, again. That just by being present and going there automatically, you're, you're, you have all the benefits. Yes, please. Uh, what you were just now saying reminded me Anytime we were uh, teaching any kind of concept, if we could put a hands on experience with the child and have it internalize it and then remember it better, then that's sort of the same thing we're talking about here, is that we're trying to internalize it so that it will stay with us over and over again. Yes, I would agree. Yeah, 100%. Um, and they, they say that some people learn by hearing. And other people learn by seeing, and other people learn by doing. <laughs> and uh, I, think, I think we have kind of all three <laughs> with the Lord's Supper. But again, uh, what I was saying is that, uh, it, you, you know, there are some of our brother and sister Christians who believe that as long as the ordained priest has said the words, uh, it, even if you don't believe, if you go up there, somehow you're receiving something from the Lord. And, and that's not what we're saying here. We're saying that this has power not just by being present, not like a magic spell, but it has power because, again, the Holy Spirit is using that to try to get us to have more faith in Jesus. It's a tool, okay? Please. Well, some churches, they I guess they do the blessing, or whatever, but they really it's the blessing because they don't believe it's the simple, but it isn't really giving them forgiveness. But I thought the words gave the power. Yes. So they whether what the church believes is that affected whether you're getting the forgiveness or not? I I would say that if you're celebrating the Lord's Supper even if they have a deficient understanding of it, and I, I would say that you're celebrating Lord's Supper, you're receiving that forgiveness. So it doesn't necessarily depend on whether they I, think this is just a symbol and it doesn't have any real meaning other than tradition. Yeah, I think that um, we'll get into this maybe next week. But I believe that the important thing is for us to understand that the, in the Lord's Supper, the Lord is working. And there's a lot of people that believe that the Lord is not working, it's just a human thing. Uh, but whether they believe it or not, I think the Lord is working. Uh, it doesn't depend on their beliefs what God is going to be doing. Uh, but it does depend on our beliefs as to whether we're getting the benefit of that. Yeah, I, I kind of like to compare it to uh, the difference between a cat and a duck, okay? okay? If the duck gets wet, if you throw water on a duck, it runs off, right? It's got some oil in it, on its feathers and stuff, and it, you know, it shakes its feathers out and it's dry. If you get a cat wet, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the cat does not like it, and the cat looks like, you, you know, 
uh, a bedraggled something or other for a long time until it finally dries off. That water penetrates. Uh, and, there, and I think that, it, you know, we can come to the Lord's Supper like a duck or like a cat. The water is there. God is there. God wants us to have more faith. But if we're coming there and we're not listening and we're not um, uh, 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 we're not trusting in Jesus as our Savior, it's like water on the duck. It just bounces off. But we come to the Lord's Supper and we say, yes, Jesus died for me. That water is going to give us a back. Okay, we're, we're going to we're going to be receiving everything that he has in there. So I would say that, you know, like you, you go to a church that they, they're, they, they maybe are not thinking about everything that the Lord's Supper has in mind. Okay, they might not be thinking about it, but you are, and the Lord is there. Okay, you're, you're still celebrating the Lord's Supper in remembrance of Jesus, yeah, and resurrection. But I think he's there. But it's watered down. It's yeah, down. yeah, the, 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 teaching, the teaching is deficient. Uh, but, but you know what? Here's another thing, too. Uh, God is not giving us a theological exam in order for us to get into heaven or in order for us to have a relationship with him. There can be some things that are off or maybe we didn't understand before or whatever. But when we come to the Lord's Supper, the important thing is, are we remembering that Jesus died for me? Are we understanding that God wants me to have more faith in Jesus and we're reenacting something because of that. Uh, and, and then, you know, even if they didn't get every little thing right, I mean, uh, the, the Lord is there. Do you uh, remember that song? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Well, you know, we weren't there at that time, but this is the time machine, right? <laughs> And in a sense, <clears throat> communion is trying to connect us with the past. Yeah, I'm there. And when we have communion today, go on up and say, man, I'm there. Jesus is here. He, he gave his body and blood for me. Mm -hmm. We were there because he took our sins at that time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are talking about uh, the past. And we're also connecting to the present. You might say, duh, of course, we're here in the present. Uh, but there's a couple of ways in which the Lord's Supper uh, emphasizes our life now in the present with Jesus. And I would say, first of all, gratitude, and second of all, the, the, the idea of communion or fellowship. So first of all, we have to understand that in the Passover meal, <clears throat> multiple prayers of thanksgiving were common. So if we take a look at Mark 14, it says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, now when, when the Bible says that, blessing something, blessing can mean in the Bible, uh, the, the, the sense of the Lord bless you and keep you, and that, it can mean that, but it can also mean give thanks. Sometimes when it says, we bless the Lord, well, how are you blessing the Lord? You're blessing the Lord by thanking him, okay? So that word bless can have two different meanings depending on where it is uh, found. So Jesus took bread after blessing it, he, he gave thanks for it. He broke it and gave it to them and said, take, this is my body, and he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. So right from the start, we see Jesus was in the Passover meal giving thanks. That was a part of what was going on. Uh, now, the, the first Christians also were continuing that custom. You can see, for example, in 1 Corinthians 10, the cup of blessing that we bless. 
you know, the cup of thanksgiving that we give thanks for, it is, is it not a participation, a communion, okay, in the blood of Jesus, of Christ? So you can see that that was common there. And I, I think, well, let's just read this here together, please. Colossians 3, 15 to 17. It's a little long, but it, it's good, okay? Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, right? Uh, that's uh, the, the thing. Jesus was giving thanks in, in the first communion, and we come to the communion also now giving thanks. Uh, and for that reason, many churches call communion the Eucharist. Eucharist comes from the Greek word eukaristeo, which means I give thanks. So we're giving thanks to God as a natural response to his action of forgiveness. We give thanks in the present for what God has done in the past. Uh, and that thankfulness, that's an integral part of our worship, and it's an integral, oops, sorry, it's an integral part of communion as well. <clears throat> You know, it gets you to think, doesn't it? Uh, how often do we just say thank you to the Lord and not immediately ask him for something? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I start off by saying, Lord, thank you. And by the way, can you give me this, 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 and this? <laughs> and, and that's when I remember to say thanks. Sometimes, sometimes a prayer is more like a shopping list. Yeah. There, there, there was a song that said, Lord, give me this. I want that. Bless me, Lord, I pray. Give, grant me what I think I need to make it through the day. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, it's a never-ending shopping list. And I think that that's the case. Now, don't get me wrong. God wants us to ask him for what we need. He wants us to trust him. When we're burdened, he wants us to give our burdens to him. Let's be clear about that. It's not bad to ask him for things. However, I think the other side of the coin is sometimes something that we neglect. Like the uh, the nine lepers who were healed and didn't come back to give thanks. Sometimes we are forgetful of it. And the Lord's Supper is there to remind us again, you are forgiven. You have eternal life in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Very appropriate that we have a, a, a prayer of thanks when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Now, it doesn't mean if we forget to have a prayer of thanks that it's not the Lord's Supper somehow. It's not a, a, a part of the magic formula or something like that. No, it's the Lord's Supper. But, you know, this, it's appropriate that we give thanks to God. Do you remember that part? You know, we say uh, in the traditional liturgy, we say, uh, give thanks to the Lord right and say it is meet and right so to do yet it is truly meet right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you O lord holy father everlasting god for you have da, 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 da. and there it is you know thanks okay the second part of today of the present is communion that we're going to be together with the Lord. Now, it, the word communion means unity. It means fellowship or union, connection, participation. There's there, there's a connection there, okay? That's what communion is all about, koinonia. And, and the Lord's Supper is not the only way that God is connecting us with Jesus, but it is a very special way. The, the Bible says we're united with Christ in baptism, for example. Okay, the, uh, in the worship service, even if we don't have 
communion that Sunday, we connect with Jesus. Or at least, I hope we connect with Jesus, okay? That's the whole purpose of us getting here on Sunday. We want to connect with him and with each other, right? Uh, and so when we live in the spirit and not in the flesh, we are united with Jesus, Romans 8, 1. But the Lord's Supper is a very important part of our relationship with Jesus. And so in many churches, in many churches, the Lord's Supper is called communion. And that word emphasizes the Lord's Supper. And in the Lord's Supper, God is connecting us with Christ in a special way. That's why we often say that we commune when we go to the Lord's Supper. We commune. We're being connected. Uh, so when you partake of the Lord's Supper, you, do you think about that sometimes? I mean, I'm connecting with Jesus? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think sometimes it gets to be just something we do, right? Automatic. We just do it because we do it. So let's read 1 Corinthians 10. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? That word participation in Greek can be translated communion. Maybe some of you memorized that as communion back in the day. Yeah. There's, there's a special connection there. Uh, so communion with Jesus. We have unity. We have fellowship. We have connection with him. We are the bride of Christ. There's a, a, an undeniable connection there. Maybe you can see it visually, those of you who learn visually. Uh, there it is. In communion, when, when we go to, to the Lord's Supper, we have communion with Jesus. So the Word of God reminds us that we're all one body in Christ, and that's the second part. We're not only getting communion with the Lord, we're having communion, a connection with each other. Can we read, that's the next verse in 1 Corinthians, mm -hmm. the, the one we just read. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Okay, so what does that mean for us today? What is, when you read that, what is it saying to you? It's the unity of the entire church body with Christ. Yeah, so we're one. Yeah, Christ is part of us, we're part of Christ. Just as I am in you, so you are in me. Is that reality when we go up to communion? I most certainly hope so. <laughs> yeah. we, we may not always recognize it, but that is a reality. That's one and you're going, yeah. you know, I don't really like what so-and-so did the other day. <laughs> uh, we're still one, right? You know, you get to choose your friends, but you don't choose your family, do you? <laughs> And we're supposed to be a church family. But that also means that we need to be forgiving to one another, right? We need to be able to reconcile with one another. That's not always something that we do very well. The Word of God affirms that we are one body in Christ. You know, Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 3, Ephesians 4, Ephesians 5, I like Ephesians. <laughs> Colossians chapter 3. There's so many places in the Bible that it says we are one body in Christ. We may have different functions, you know, uh, the hand or the foot or the head or the whatever. You know, we have different uh, things that we can do. We're, we're not all the same. We're not all in the same mold. We may have different ideas sometimes. We may have conflicting ideas sometimes. But what he's saying is we're all one body. We need to work it out. We need to work together. Uh, like I said a couple Sundays ago, we need to work together. Uh, and we, everyone is important. We need to work together. So, so when we go up to the Lord's Supper, we have communion, not just with Jesus, but with each other. Uh, now, there were problems in the church in Corinth. When, you know, we were talking about 1 Corinthians. 
Uh, you can read about these in your own time, okay? I'm not going to get into details here. But the, in, in the Corinthian church, there were a lot of divisions and rivalries. They, in fact, it looks like they had parties. Uh, one, some of them were saying, I belong to Peter. I belong to Paul. I belong to Apollos. I belong to Christ. But it wasn't because of Christ. It was just that were their party that was named Christ. Okay? Yeah, they were all busy with their own stuff. And when they had the Lord's Supper, there were problems. They did not repent of those divisions, and they were having a lot of difficulties. Now, they celebrated the Lord's Supper in a little bit different way than us. They had an actual meal before they celebrated the Lord's Supper. And in that meal, it was not a potluck. It was not a Lutheran sacrament. Because each one brought their own food and they did it with their own family. And so there were some families that had uh, just about nothing and other, other ones were almost getting drunk on all the wine they were drinking. You know, they were really a problem. Read it in 1 Corinthians, there, was, there were problems there. And then they wanted to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And, uh, and uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians that they were eating and drinking, not blessing, but judgment upon themselves because they were not one body. They were divided in that sense. He said, don't you have houses to eat and drink? Come here and be one. So, yeah, here it says in 1 Corinthians 11. Let's read that together. Anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. Wow. Paul really puts his foot down there, doesn't he? Now, what does it mean to discern the body? When I was a kid, somebody said, if you don't realize that the body of Jesus is really present in the Lord's Supper, you are not discerning the body. I said, well, okay, in a sense, that's true, I suppose. Uh, but I think that in the context of 1 Corinthians, it means a little bit different. It means if we don't discern that we are all part of the body of Christ, then we're not getting blessings out of the Lord's Supper. Yeah, well, so that's why we reconcile with each other. Discerning is an um, understanding, would be another word that you could Yeah, uh -huh. If I'm not recognizing that you and I are part of one body in Christ, and we're celebrating the Lord's Supper together, even if I don't agree with you on this point or that point, that's you're one, we're one in Christ. Yeah. If, if, if I'm going to the Lord's Supper with resentment in my heart towards other people, uh, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not getting the blessing out of it. Yeah. You, you remember that what Jesus said, if, if we do not forgive from the heart others, God's not going to forgive us. Yes. I used to stay home or stay away from the people. Like the children and I had a fight on the way to church, and I was guilty. I was going to go to the Lord's Supper. Well, that's a personal decision if you want to do that. However, I believe that the better thing to do is when we have uh, the prayer of confession to confess that to the Lord and to say, Lord, forgive me and help me to forgive them. And that's why many churches have the greeting of peace. Now, we do it right at the beginning of the service, but there's a lot of churches that do it right before communion because that's the time it's not just to say hi, okay? <laughs> that That's the time, if there's been a problem between you and somebody else, that's the time to go up and say, the peace of the Lord be with you. And if you don't have the chance to say that directly, to, to, to say, Lord, forgive me and help me to give my hand to that person after church. Now, all of us make lots of mistakes, okay? But we need Jesus' help to be able to forgive. But, but it, this is the thing. It's an important part of communion. When I go to communion, I'm receiving communion. I'm receiving forgiveness, 
But at the same time, I'm also forgiving. At that moment, I'm saying, Lord, help me to forgive also other people. Whatever I have against anybody, I put it in your hands, and I want you to make me clean. So, yes. Now, kind of what she was talking about, um, I mean, in my own experience, I've had about two people in my life that at points I have had trouble forgiving them. And there has been a couple times that I didn't want to take me because I knew in my heart that I was not forgiving those people. And I mean, I know scripture says to forgive people over and over, you know, I know some of the apostles asked, well, how many times did Jesus say seven times seven, seven, something like that? But at some point, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't think we should regularly do this, but is there any time that you think it's appropriate for us not to take communion if we are understanding what the scripture says? Yeah. Um, here, I'm going to give you my pastoral advice. Uh, I believe. Can you summarize his comments? What's that? Oh, what he said? Yeah. He said, it, is, is there a, sometimes we struggle with forgiving people. We know we should forgive them, and it's, it's not easy. And sometimes he was asking, is there any point at which you think that we should not take communion because there's, uh, we're not forgiving somebody? And, and I'm going to say, this, this is my kind of pastoral advice to you. I, 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 I don't know that I can give you a Bible verse about it, but what I feel is that if you are not willing to forgive someone, you should stay away from communion. However, you may find it, you may find yourself struggling, but you're still asking the Lord for help to do it. That is to say, I, I, well, I don't know how it is with you guys, but there's been some times that somebody has done something and it really has caused a hurt in my life. And I found it hard to give that to the Lord. But I give it to the Lord, and then five minutes later, I find myself thinking, but they really did that. <laughs> you pull it back. But you know, as, as often as it comes up, I, I say, Lord, I need your help. I need your help to forgive and, and get past this. Help me to forgive. And I think that when you if you're coming with that attitude, Lord, I, I want your forgiveness, and I want you to help me to forgive. I think that you're ready for the Lord's Supper. If you come with the attitude of, Lord, forgive me, but I'm sure not going to forgive them. I, I, I'm never going to forgive them. I hope you put them in hell. Uh, you know, then, then I think you need to rethink things. Uh, yes, please. Oh, as you were saying that, it sounded that you got mad, and then I asked, please help me to forgive them, and then I made and that's kind of what you were talking about last week about being a slave to sin. You know, it just keeps grabbing at us one more time, yeah. one more time. So, so you just have to keep going close. Yeah. While we're here on this earth, we're in a fight yeah. with ourselves, uh -huh. you know. Uh, and uh, the Lord helps us. We can do better. We can do better, but we never quite get to be perfect. And sometimes there's things that happen that is hard to reconcile. Uh, it doesn't exonerate us. We need to do it, but we need the Lord's help. And I, I think that the, the the communion is a good place to start there. And we're saying, Lord, forgive me. Help me now to forgive other people. That's what uh, Matthew 5 is saying. You know, he's not talking about communion as such, talking about giving a gift at the altar, but I think it applies to communion as well. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. You know, so I think that that's what we're, what we're looking at. Lord, forgive me, help me to forgive as well. So there you go. Communion with Jesus, communion with each other. And we're in the process, right? Um, our communion with Jesus needs to get stronger. And our communion with each other needs to get stronger. Uh, I think I am going to end there, and we'll talk about the future when we come back.
next week, okay? But for now, yeah, remember, we're going up to the Lord's Supper today, right? So what are we gonna do? First of all, we're in the past, remembering, remembering. and reenacting. And what God wants is that by doing that, that we have more faith in the Lord. And then we're coming with thanksgiving. And we're coming to be forgiven and also, Lord, forgive others. Help me to forgive others. Okay? So we can be one. If you would, uh, please rise. Let's go ahead and finish with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.